Future House just dropped four super intelligent AI agents and they're free to use right now backed by Eric Schmidt, the former Google CEO. This isn't some closed beta. It's public, powerful, and already outpacing PhDs in key tasks. Named Crow, Falcon, Owl, and Phoenix, each agent handles a different part of the workflow, from answering complex questions to designing brand new molecules, cutting down work that used to take weeks into minutes. So let's talk about it. All right, let's start with the vibe of the platform. Future House claims each agent is specialized from the ground up for science, not chit chat. Crow is the quick draw generalist. Ask it a technical question and bam, it sifts through open access papers and spits out a concise citation studded answer. Falcon goes deeper, slurping in dozens or even hundreds of full text articles plus proprietary databases like Open Targets, then weaving them into long form review. Owl, rebranded, from a prototype called Has Anyone, works like a detective, checking if someone's already done that crazy experiment so you don't waste six months reinventing the pipette. And Phoenix, still labeled experimental, is the chemistry brainchild. It proposes fresh compounds, predicts reactions, and even cost checks whether it's cheaper to buy or synthesize a molecule. All four can be chained together, which Future House says lets a single researcher juggle workloads that used to require entire teams. Now, none of this happens in a vacuum. Google's own AI co-science announcement back in February lit a fire. And remember Google's 2023 genome system? It bragged about 40 supposedly new materials, but a later analysis showed none were genuinely novel. That flop still haunts the field, highlighting how hallucinations and shaky reasoning can torpedo flashy demos. Future House is clearly trying to avoid that trap. In every blog post, they hammer on transparent reasoning and multi-stage evidence gathering. You can literally click through each step, watch the agent pick search terms, rank journals by citation graphs, and see why, say, Nature Genetics made the cut, while someone's bio-archive preprint did not. In one demo, Falcon pulled 32 papers, decided 24 were truly relevant, then distilled 62 separate chunks of evidence into a final answer. And you, the user, could inspect every breadcrumb. That visibility matters because let's be real, scientists are a skeptical bunch. Even Sam Rodriguez, Andrew White, and the rest of the Future House leadership admit today's large language models melt down on high precision tasks. LLMs can't even count nitrogens in a molecule reliably. So Phoenix leans on external chemistry tools, patent databases, solubility predictors, reaction simulators, basically calculators stapled onto an LLM brain. The team runs its own wet lab in San Francisco so they can close the loop, generate a hypothesis, synthesize compounds, test them, feed the data back, tweak the model, repeat. Future House calls this their four layer architecture. At the base are generic AI tools. Think AlphaFold or yes, your favorite gradient descent wizardry. Above that sit assistants like Crow and Falcon that execute specific workflows such as protein annotate. One rung higher is the future AI scientist that will design experiments end to end. And hovering over everything is the human researcher, the quest giver steering the big questions like curing Alzheimer's or in today's flagship demo, tackling polycystic ovary syndrome. All right, PCOS. This example is how Future House tries to prove the platform isn't vaporware. Michaela Hinks, who leads their science team, says she came in cold. No PCOS background, just genetics chops. Step one, she fired up Falcon and asked for a comprehensive breakdown of PCOS definitions, symptoms, diagnostic criteria, underlying causes the whole deal. The agent ran a torrent of queries, hoovered up full text studies and clinical trial records, filtered duplicates, and produced an overview in minutes. The transparent trace showed not just titles and DOIs, but quality scores tied to citation networks. Then Michaela went surgical. She switched to Crow and asked which genes keep popping up in PCOS genome-wide association studies. Crow rattled off big hitters, including the now infamous DND1A, and linked each to multiple GWAS papers. But listing genes is table stakes, so next she pinged OWL. Has anyone used CRISPR screens to connect these GWAS hits to hyperandrogenism? OWL confirmed that yeah, one group had shown overexpression of DNND1A boosting testosterone in vitro. However, nobody had nailed the mechanism. 
Boom, research gap. Identified in four short prompts instead of a weekend library crawl. Still curious, Michaela Probe, do we know why increased DEND1A jacks up androgen levels? And the agents came up empty. That's the moment a wet lab experiment becomes justified. Future House argues, most of us burn days or weeks to reach that point. Enter Phoenix. Given the open question, Michaela asked Phoenix to propose three novel, potentially drug-like compounds that might tamp down DEND1A-driven hyperandrogenism. Because no FDA-approved binders exist for the protein, Phoenix first mapped protein interaction partners, then fetched molecules that hit those partners. It checked each candidate's patent status, solubility, functional groups, even synthetic routes, tossing out anything derivative. By the end, it produced a little dossier for each molecule. Why it might modulate DNA 1A, how much it would cost to procure, and whether you'd need to tweak it into a prodrug down the line. Future House says tasks like patent searching or log S prediction rely on specialized tools because again, Pure LMs are comically bad at chemistry arithmetic. Now, metrics. Future House ran benchmarks, lit QA precision and accuracy head-to-head -head against frontier search models such as XAI plus human PhD literature sleuths. On retrieval precision, correct answers over answered questions, and accuracy, correct over all questions, their agents topped the charts. They haven't published raw percentages in the press articles, but the claim is superhuman. To be fair, the blog concedes Phoenix is less battle-tested, so it may make mistakes, and is out there to gather public feedback. Rapid iteration is the strategy. Nobody's pretending perfection. That honesty matters, especially after the G nome disappointment and the broader worry that hallucinations could slip unvetted claims into real experiments. Gale is the other buzzword. PubMed holds 38 million papers. Clinicaltrials.gov tracks more than 500,000 trials, and scientists juggle thousands of siloed tools. Future House argues individual labs can't scrape, store, or rate limit that much data. They lack the engineering muscle. So the nonprofit wants to be the infrastructure layer. API calls so your screening pipeline can auto-kick literature reviews or contradiction hunts every night at 2 a.m. Everything is free, publicly available, and open to feedback, with the source code for key components opened under permissive licenses. The board includes names like Scientist Entrepreneur, Adam Marblestone, and Schmidt's backing presumably keeps the lights on without VC pressure to monetize everything tomorrow. Of course, skepticism hasn't vanished. The TechCrunch write-up notes that so far, Future House hasn't produced an entirely novel discovery, no new alloy, no first-in-class drug, despite fancy agents. The nonprofit counters that even Google's Genomi, with its 2023 fanfare, couldn't deliver net new materials, so the bottleneck is partly experimental logistics, not just algorithm smarts. They run a physical lab precisely to cross that last mile. Still, until a peer-reviewed breakthrough pops out, the broader scientific community will stay cautiously optimistic at best. Future House's launch timing is intriguing, too. The AI sector is flush with capital. OpenAI and Anthropic both publicly brag about accelerating science. Yet many bench scientists complain that general-purpose chatbots are unreliable, hallucinate, or cite retracted studies. Future House tries to thread that needle by restricting its agents to carefully curated corpora, weighing source provenance and exposing every reasoning step. In demos, you can even watch the agent ditch low-impact journals in favor of higher citation density or stronger experimental methods. It's nerdy, sure, but it might be the transparency researchers need to trust an AI collaborator. Now about that decade-long roadmap. Future House envisions the full AI scientist as an autonomous system that can read every paper in biology, spot contradictions, devise hypotheses, design and execute experiments, evaluate the data, and iterate, basically compressing the scientific method. Humans remain in charge of the quest, the top-level framing of what matters, whether that's curing Alzheimer's, decoding the brain, or universal gene delivery, the idea is to let machines handle the brute force literature grinding and high-dimensional search, while humans judge significance and ethics. If it works, the company says we could clear today's global backlog of unexplored opportunities, 
thousands of promising leads buried in PDF supplemental sections, simply because no one has time to compare them. All of this lands in a world already buzzing about AI ethics. Future House's insistence on open sourcing and auditable reasoning is meant to address risk, but unintended consequences, say a hallucinated synthesis route that actually produces a toxic byproduct, still loom. The nonprofit is betting that transparency plus community feedback beats closed door secrecy. They've even plastered a big please provide feedback banner over Phoenix's chemistry tools. So what's next? Short term, Future House wants to widen the platform's range in just raw lab data, not just published papers. Picture an agent that sees your single cell RNA sequence results in real time and immediately correlates them against millions of past experiments. The team thinks that within a couple of years, most discoveries will carry an AI-driven component, whether at the literature stage, the analytical stage, or both. Long term, if they manage to keep hallucinations, bias, and experimental error in check, they might really bend the curve of scientific productivity, which economists have shown has stagnated even as paper counts soar. And look, hype aside, the launch day invitation is simple. Go to platform.heo.io, sign up for free, query crow, fire falcon, let owl double check your idea, then ask Phoenix if it can cook you a molecule. Whether you're in academia with a Dropbox full of half-read PDFs or a biotech startup drowning in assay data, the promise is a turbo button you didn't have yesterday. Will it deliver? History says skepticism is healthy, but the alternative? Wading through 38 million PubMed articles, 500,000 clinical trials, and who knows how many supplementary spreadsheets by hand feels, frankly, impossible. If Future House's agents can shave even 10% off that grunt work without injecting hallucinated nonsense, that alone could make them worth the hype. And if, as the founders hope, an autonomous AI scientist emerges before 2035, well, we may be telling our grad students stories about the dark ages when we had to parse every p-value ourselves. So, are we really about to let AI outperform top researchers and take over the front lines of discovery? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.